Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our... Oh, I forgot. Sorry. I forgot. Uh, we were doing streams for our friends in Australia last night, and I forgot to switch a setting back. Here we go. Um, let's try this. Power of Northern Hemisphere. There we go. Uh, welcome back to the Daily Creative Challenges. My name is Andrew Hawkrattle, and I have my hat backwards because I'm the cool mom. Um, I will be your host and your trainer and your lesson teacher um, for the next two weeks. We have so much time together, and I'm excited that we have that time together because it's always great to see you all. Um, all these people. Hello, Nick, Alberto, Matt is here, Juhi, Dimitri, Steve, Alberto. Oh my goodness, Paul, there are so many people here. Um, that is so much fun. Yes. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Again, my name is Andrew Hawkrattle. These are the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenges. We are live every single day um, for the next two weeks doing challenges at 11.30 Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I also will be live during the nights. Um, if you are in Pacific Standard Time, if you're in Australia time, um, we are live at noon in Australia Sydney time. So join us uh, during that time as well to do another Daily Creative Challenge, right? Um, super fun, and then I'm live after that to give you feedback on on your daily creative challenges. So to see when you can get uh, that, uh, the subtitle said Hawk Rattle, and that's, yes, thank you. And that's exactly what I'm about to transition to. Um, so yes, you can follow at hawk.co. Um, you can just call me Hawk if it's easier for you. Um, and yes, it's pronounced Hawk Rattle. That's absolutely perfect. So thank you, caption people. Um, you can follow along here, hawk.co on Instagram or here on Behance, and that will get you connected when I go live and notify you if I go live um, during the night to do some feedback on on your daily creative challenges which reminds me i need like a ding above my head like a little light bulb bing which reminds me you can get involved in our daily creative challenges by going up here to daily uh to bit.ly slash ai discord i had two cups of coffee this morning so we're gonna rock it today um go up here to bit.ly slash ai discord that's how you get involved and join our thriving community of creatives. Um, let's hop over to the Discord and see what's happening. And this is the place that you will... Oh, let me go ahead and turn off my playlist. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, so this is the place that you will get connected, that you um, will post your work and get some feedback from us. Yesterday, the challenge was to tell your story through a graphic and tell me a little bit about where you're going on your journey over the next few weeks. It's all about exploration and all about seeing where you can land and explore an illustrator. Great job, Bcast. This was some feedback that I gave last night on my stream. Um, if you missed it, you missed it. There is a recap that you can watch that or join us again tonight. I'll be live again tonight giving you feedback. Um, but he applied some really great feedback and has stepped up how this works um, and how it looks. So great job. Five stars, A plus, um, excellent workout. You're going to be shredded in no time. So um, let's go ahead and uh, let's see what else we have to talk about. Yes, let's do this. So you can get involved um, as well by going here to behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. Um, that will get you each day. Uh, let me refresh real quick. There we go. Um, our source files for stretching type. Today we are in the ballerina um, uh, studio. We're in a dance studio today to stretch out some type. Make sure that we are stretched and ready to go. Um, and then here you can click that button to get notifications every day that you are um, that there's a new challenge available. So with that, um, we are four minutes in, which is just about the maximum amount of time that I'm allowed to talk before we get into the challenge. I talk too much, guys. Um, so let's hop in and go over to Hawk's Gym and see what we've got cooking up today. And we are back. We are in the gym. I have never done a bumper that is the 
perfect amount of time for me to make that change. And that is the perfect amount of time. Um, cool. And uh, Oz, I'm a graphic designer for a surf sports company. Great. Um, this challenge could be for you. Maybe you do some fun surf stuff. Um, or maybe if you don't want to do that because it's your job, you can do something else. Um, there's no rules here. Um, absolutely no rules. So let's hop over into Illustrator. And today what we're doing is we're going to be talking about type. Um, type is such a fun and unique way to communicate a message. Um, we can pick the right type to create a voice. Um, and creating the right voice will make your entire piece come together. So what I want to do is actually I'm not going to start in Illustrator. We're going to start in a tool that we used yesterday as well um, over here in uh, Adobe Fonts. So we're going to click on Browse Fonts. And what we want is we're going to be stretching out type today. The idea is for the type to feel like a person. It's going to have energy. It's going to have character. So I want something that I know is a little bit thick, a little bit heavy um, to really uh, uh, fill that space. I don't know what the word is that I wanted there to, to fill the space to feel like it's locked in and kind of a block. So I definitely want something that's a sans serif. So over here, I can literally click on sans serif um, and that will allow us to filter all of those into just sans serifs. And yes, Oz, warmups are important. This is our first official challenge, so we do need to stretch first. Um, I know that I want something that's thicker, so I can filter here by the weight and go to something that is a little bit thicker. Uh, I love that. And let's say that I want something that's medium width. So this has um, go gone ahead and uh, filtered all those out to the different things that I wanted. Uh, and up here, I can do um, whatever sample text I want. So let's say that we want our text to be stretch. Actually, let's do stretching just so we have some space. Um, and I know I want something that's tall, that feels a little bit more uh, uh, grounded. And so what I like um, is I actually like this one up here, Sophia. So we're going to click on Sophia and watch how easy this is. Um, we are going to, let me make sure it has like a super bold. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is just go to activate fonts right here. And I am going to activate all of these. Let's do that. And usually I have this pre-activated, but today we didn't do it ahead of time. Uh, so we're going to see how it uh, works. And we are going to come over here into our Illustrator document. Um, and yes, this is the Solo Jazz Cup, 100%. Um, and yes, Joy, uh, Adobe Fonts does have a tag now, which is great. So we're going to hop in. Um, and what we want to do is we are going to, with those fonts syncing, we're going to come over here. And I forgot what they were called. Let's look. Sophia. Sophia, Sophia. All right, so um, let's go ahead and read the prompt for today. If you don't have this file, you can download it at behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. Wade will drop that um, into the font, uh, sorry, into the chat for you. Uh, it's really hard to read the chat and talk, guys. Uh, so today, challenge one, let's stretch it out. Use the warp tools to stretch and distort type. And we're also using a little bit of envelope distort today if you want extra credit. Um, so today, downward dog, upward learning, forward progress. On each day, I give you a little affirmation, something that's fun um, up here. So feel free to have fun with those. Uh, hopefully, they give you a little bit laugh. So let's see if Sophia has synced. There we go. Now Sophia is in our font so we can use an illustrator. This nice little cloud um, is there. Oh, I can do this. This tiny little cloud that's right there. That means that it is synced from Adobe fonts and it is floating in my creative cloud. All right, so we have our nice little studio here. Um, this is a nice little dance studio. And what we want to do is maybe we want to start stretching the type, right? And we want to practice stretching. So what I want to do is let's have somebody on the ground that's doing like a like an upward uh, upward dog, a sun salutation. What's that called? Where you like do the thing. Anyway, I think it's downward dog maybe. Um, let's go ahead and put the word stretching. So I'm just going to grab the type tool hitting T and I'm going to click anywhere and just type stretching. This is one of my favorite challenges because it can get super weird and I want you guys to get super weird with it. Um, experiment and try new things. So we've just scaled that up and we're going to type in Sophia here. Um, I want Sophia condensed black. There we go. Yeah. So this is really nice. And let's just blow that up, blow this up so you guys can see. Um, and what I want to do, right, is I want to warp this type so that it feels like it's coming down and stretching, really giving it that momentum. We talked about indexes yesterday, and this will be an index to give some momentum. Howard Pinsky in the chat. Hey, Howard. Um, yes, I am. Uh, I am using Sophia, which I guess is one of your favorite fonts. So um, 
there we go, a little tie together there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to object. We are going to go to uh, 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 warp. What am I doing here? I'm going to go to effect. I'm sorry, my brain broke. We're going to go to effect. Then we're going to go uh, warp. And then we're just going to pick any of these. So right now we're picking any of these. The warp options are going to come up. And this is what we're going to play around with. So warp is a great way to take something and really play around and make it kind of weird, make it wonky. We can click on this style and there's all kinds of different options. So we can do one that stretches to the bottom. We can do one that arches across the top. Um, we can do one that bulges out so it feels like it's stretching out. There are all kinds of different options for you to play around with here um, in the warp options. Options. Now the one that we want is we want it to have that kind of vertical stretch. So I'm going to do um, a little bit of a custom. Uh, and what you can do with the custom is we're going to come to arc and instead of having an overarching bend, we're going to send this to zero. Oops, I hit enter. I shouldn't have hit enter. So effect, warp, uh, arc, there we go. Uh, and we are going to change the distortion. So this is going to warp either the horizontal or the vertical. So if we take the horizontal one way, you can see that it starts to stretch, right? Kind of cool. And if we take the vertical, you can see that it's taking the top and stretching it uh, up and down. There we go. So it's stretching now at that kind of um, uh, perspective. So that's not quite, so I want it to have that kind of swoop and that's not quite what I want. So what I'm gonna do is try to do arc upper and see if I take that, uh, that's also not doing quite what I want. So let's do shell upper. Uh, where's the button that I want? Are we doing bulge? It seems to not be updating. Let me try this, sorry, one second. It seems to not be uh, updating, let's do bulge one more time. Let's apply a new effect. And with that, there we go. So let's horizontally um, kind of pull that. And uh, there we go. That's what we want. So we're gonna do a little bit of the overall bend and then we're gonna play around with the horizontals. Now you can play around and combine these by combining the bend and the distortion. It's gonna create some very dynamic, very weird uh, kind of looks of the type. So there we go. Let's go ahead and put this down here. So this is a person that is stretching out, right? They have that downward dog. They're really stretching out that back uh, to give it that, uh, that pull using the warp tool. And the great thing is we can come in here and maybe we can do um, back stretch. And it's gonna keep that as live text so that we can keep changing it. Um, if we need to augment the type, it still is live text. So now the next one that we're gonna do is we're going to do a stretch maybe that we are lifting our shoulders, right? And trying to do a standing stretch, right? Like a ballerina. So we're gonna do a standing stretch. And what we can do here is actually do some vertical type. So we're gonna do vertical type. We are gonna click on the type tool and we are going to select vertical type. Now when we click, we will do, uh, let's do standing. Oops, not stranding, standing. So we're gonna do the word standing and we've clicked and now it's typing vertically, right? That's, that's what we want. Um, we're gonna bring in the kerning just a little bit so that it feels a little more locked in. And instead of Sophia condensed, I'm gonna do something that feels a little wider. So we're gonna do the Sophia black. There we go. So now we have some type that is vertical, that's looking good. Um, and maybe I want this to stretch to the top that feels like it's uh, leaning forward, right? So something we can do is actually come in here and another way to distort this is to select this uh, type, go to object, go to envelope distort, and then do make with mesh. So this is gonna get a little crazy. We're just gonna set this to four by four. Um, you can set other options here if you want more, um, more uniqueness to kind of play around with. So we're gonna hit okay. And now you can see that it has made this mesh with each of these anchor points. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click into this and then select the mesh up here. That's just gonna keep me from selecting anything else. So we've isolated this and then we click on the mesh and you can see that it has all these individual mesh points. Now, I want this person to be, uh, to feel like they're stretching, right? That it's taller on top. So what I can do is just grab the direct selection tool here and I'm going to select 
just click and drag to select these anchor points. So you can see it's not selecting these anchor points here, just the top ones. And I'm going to hit scale or just S. And if you hit enter with the scale tool, um, it is going to, let's do a preview. It's going to scale those. So what it's doing is it's scaling just those anchor points and it gives you this really cool kind of perspective. So let's do that again for the top is let's scale that one more time. So it has this kind of, there we go, this kind of dimension. So you can see now that it looks like someone's maybe holding on, doing a like stretch back. Maybe they're doing some kind of ballerina uh, plie or something. That's the only term I know. Um, but something else that we can do that's fun is if we want to, we can come in here and grab these anchor points in the middle of this mesh and just start moving them to the side. So maybe we want this ballerina, and I know someone is doing ballerina for their challenges, is we can start moving this and warp on that path. So now it looks like this ballerina is maybe on point. So maybe having her on point would be uh, grabbing this one at the bottom. And again, we're gonna use the scale to just click and drag in, and you see that it's scaling that path down. So we scale that way down, and now it's a ballerina standing on point, right? Really fun, and it's still live text. So we can click into here, click this shape up here that selects just the text, and we can type in ballerina. I think that's how you spell it. And so now we've changed the live text and it's keeping all of that warp and all of that craziness uh, that we wanted to keep that shape. So let's move our back stretch over there and move our ballerina up here. Now the next one we wanna do, this one's crazy. Um, we wanna do someone that is doing yoga that has turned themselves into a little pretzel. Um, so we're gonna type out the word yoga. Not toga, Andrew, yoga. <laughs> So you type out the word yoga, and this next way to distort text is going to be something that will make with the top object. It's gonna make a mesh with the top object. So what we're gonna do is map out the object that we want. We want the person to look like they're kind of this blob, right, that is all scrunched up. And so what we're gonna do is use the pen tool to just create a shape. We're gonna kind of click, and I'm just gonna create a very rough kind of weird shape. Now we want the shape to be um, semi-large just so we have more custom, custom, customability, customization, that's the word. Um, and we're gonna do some weird little points like this. There we go. Now I'm gonna select this and hit A. So doing A is the direct selection tool. And we'll pull up these anchor points and we can just click and drag these in so that it rounds them out a little bit. So now is where it gets a little crazy and where I'm excited to see what you do with your challenges. We're gonna select both of these shapes. We're gonna select the type and we're gonna select the object. Now, before we do that, sorry, we wanna click on the object, go to right click, transform, sorry, arrange, and bring to front. So when we bring to front and we select these two, we can go to object, envelope distort, and make with top object. And watch what happens. It is going to take the type that we have on the bottom and it is going to mesh it and put it into that top object and it gets really weird. Here we go, you ready? Boom. So it is taking that and mapping it into that top object. Again, we can come into this object and if we want, we can edit these points. So we can grab this and maybe we want it to come up a little bit more here. Maybe this is getting a little too wonky for us so we want it to not be so weird. Um, we can totally play around and move those points however we want. Um, and we can also come in and double click in here and still come in and this is live text. So we can change that to say maybe bend, right? That we want someone that's put up in the ball. So these are all the people that are stretching and yes, Natasha, that is totally crazy. So that's my favorite thing to do um, with this type. You guys can play around with that and show me how you make people stretch, but we can do yoga and check this out. If we want to, we can make this weird wonky shape there we go. We'll again right click, transform, bring to uh, arrange, bring to front, did the same thing. Select them both. And if you want to do it with a hotkey, control alt C. Um, uh, yep, we'll do it with the top object or command uh, alt C. Command option C. That's what it is for Mac. Uh, and so it will just put it into that shape. We can grab these, pull them around, and it will continue to make this type nice and weird and wonky. So that's what I want to see from your uh, challenges. And let's go ahead and put some color on these, why not? 
just make them unique. Oh, the ballerina has to be pink. Why would it not be? Um, and there we go, a little green. So these are some three different ways to do some type. What I want you to do with your daily creative challenges is find the type that feels right to you. Maybe it is going to be a script. Maybe it's going to be the sans serif. Maybe it'll be something with a sharp serif. Um, and Jennifer, the pool is today we are stretching. Um, the pool is uh, the sorry. The theme is uh, fitness. Uh, and so we are doing some stretching today uh, using type. So I want you to experiment and tell me a story. Who are the people? I should be able to, uh, that's right, it doesn't have to be pink, you're right. Pink is just the, um, right, right? So this is actually a good thing. When we talk about indexes, right? So imagine you have a pink box, right? A pink box implies as an index that there might be donuts inside. It's the thing that we think of first. If it's a white box, maybe it has a cake. Uh, and so the index that I don't have a figure of a ballerina, having the pink helps to inform people and in their minds, they will hopefully relate pink with a ballerina because that's just a cognitive barrier that's happening. Yes, ballerinas could be white. They could be right uh, black for black swan. They could be any of those. But if we're informing and communicating visually through an index, pink is something that most people would relate to a ballerina. Um, and so it could be any other color, um, but yes, uh, we could very much use that as an index to uh, inform. Uh, and how did you scale for the ballerina? Sure, let's hop back into that. I like the last few minutes of this are always uh, question answering. So up here, we have our mesh. We're gonna click on the envelope mesh right here. And what I did is I grabbed the direct selection tool and I was just selecting these anchor points directly on this mesh. And as I start to move these, you'll see, you'll see that it will mesh and make that uh, move. Now we also can grab the scale tool, which is over here, there it is, the scale tool, and we can scale these by holding shift and it will blow those up. You also can click and drag to make it kind of weird, kind of wonky, and it just gives you some really great a dimension that you can play with on that uh, on that mesh. So that's what we did today. I want to see you make some really weird type, really stretch it out, show me how flexible you can get, and then go ahead and post your work here at bit.ly slash AI challenge. That will be where we will be uh, posting our challenges, getting feedback from our incredible mentors. And again, I will be live tonight giving you live feedback on my personal Behance, which you can follow right here at hawk.co or click on the button that exists somewhere near here um, to follow. I'll be giving live feedback and we also will be live again tonight 7 p.m pacific standard time noon sydney time for all of our friends in australia or in other time zones so make sure you come back for those and join us every day for the daily creative challenge over the next two weeks uh, we are staying with the fitness theme the entire time and so it's going to be a very fun time i'll get to wear this shirt which is so much cooler than the usual clothes i wear on stream um, and let's take a look at the schedule coming up. So I am here right now. Um, and next up, we have our friend Rachel Smith. She'll be doing some UI UX design systems. I love a good system. Um, and then our friend Andrea Epi. Oh my goodness. My friend Andrea Hawk uh, has gotten married and has changed the last name. We were name twins, Andrew Hawkrattle and Andrea Hawk. But today we separate our ways um, and we are no longer name twins. Uh, I was the evil twin. So now maybe I can start my conversion into being the good twin. Uh, and then at the end of the day, a sketch party with our friend Kathleen Martin. We love Kathleen. Um, so make sure you stay tuned. There's content, there's content all day here. Um, there may even be some Australia streams tonight if you want to tune in just before 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or in the morning Sydney time around 9 or 10. There should be some content there um, that you can watch and engage with and have some fun. So join us um, again tonight if you want to come hang out, grab some dinner. Um, if not, tell your friends that they're in Australia and they can... <laughs> They can come hang out. I don't know. That's the that's the place that we end the stream today. I will see you tomorrow for another daily creative challenge. Y'all are great. Text your friends, see how they are, and uh, make someone's day today. See you later.